Hello everybody, this is Superfang99. Before we begin, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell to be notified when I post a new video. It really helps out the channel. Today, the investigator expansion for The Circle Undone has been released. I am super excited. A lot of the player cards in this expansion, if I recall, are very, very good. Um... And uh, yeah, I'm just super excited. Also excited for when the actual campaign expansion comes out, which should be sometime next month. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get into it. Uh, this is an unboxing, and it's also a little bit of a review. I'm going to go over and talk about every single player card in this expansion. Um, just some brief thoughts. I'm not, I'm not going to go into too much detail, obviously, judging by the runtime of this episode. But uh, yeah, that's what's going to go on. So why don't we just get on right into it? Can I also just say... Um, I really love the art for all of the investigator expansions, but this one in particular, I know it's hard to see. There's like a dagger right there in the middle. Um, it's so freaking cool. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's up, but, uh, the, these investigator expansions is, uh, they're pretty freaking cool. Okay. Let's just open this up here on the back. You can see the, um, preview of what's to come. There are six investigators in this expansion because we have a double mystic expansion, this one. And uh, yeah, let's open it. Ooh, exciting. Okay, so as always, ooh, there's a rule sheet. That's good to know. Here are the main cards. It's a rule sheet. Get this out. It's gonna be another one on the other side. Oops, come on. Come on, I believe in you. There we go. Here is the second batch of cards, and there should also be some investigator mini cards, as always. Okay, let's put this aside here. So, in the meantime, let's look at this expansion. Pretty much self explanatory. New tarot slot. Pretty cool idea new kind of slot they have the bonded keyword which is literally just for two cards in this expansion um bonded really was a more of a, a huge thing in the dream in this expansion which is coming up next we also have the multi-class cards the first instance instance of multi-class cards before edge of the earth which is a uh, super cool of course there's only five cards in this that are multi-class but they do upgrade to different classes so that's super cool uh joe's hunch deck and exile of course and, uh, yep, thanks to all those people at Fantasy Flight Games for making this beautiful repackage. All right, well, let's just get on and open these cards. I'm going to slowly open these up. I have, I actually do, technically already have Carolyn Fern, her book version. But uh, this is, of course, her official release. So that is awesome. Right. Look at these fat stacks of investigators. And I'll leave that closed. Okay. Let's start with Carolyn, shall we? Here, let me just get off all the investigators. And here we go. Here's all the guardian cards. All nicely in order. Although, of course, their expansion numbers are not going to be in order just because of the packs that they came out in. Do the rogue cards, the mystic cards, survivors, and neutrals. Bunch of neutrals in this expansion, actually. Oh, okay. The multi class cards are also back there. That makes sense. Let's start with the investigators. So we are starting with Carolyn Fern, the psychologist. Three willpower, four intellect, two combat, and two agility. She's pretty awesome after one of your card effects heals horror from an investigator or an ally investigator ally asset that investigator controls. The, the healed card's controller gains a resource. Oh, this sounds pretty cool instead. Um, her deck building is a little odd, I will say. It is um, guardian cards 0 to 3, neutral 0 to 5, cards that heal horror 0 to 5. So all cards that can heal horror or have heal horror on their card somewhere. And then up to 15 other Seeker and or Mystic cards level 0 to 1. 
do not and then deck building requirements and also no weapon cards level one to five which is a uh, it's very very kind of wonky deck building but uh it does lead to some very interesting decks that she can take here's our her signature cards hypnotic therapy obviously a very good way to heal some horror and of course drawing cards and gaining resources off of it and uh also ways to generate more horror healing and then rational thoughts this is the card that you have to heal before you can heal everything else pretty spook pretty not bad weakness because it's it doesn't do anything it just turns off your ability until you solve it all right so then we have joe diamonds 2442 and his thing is his hunch deck which is honestly a pretty unique investigator ability i would say basically he has a set aside deck of 10 cards plus his weakness that gets set aside before the game all full of insights and at the beginning of the investigation phase he is it investigation phase it is the investigation phase he reveals the top one and he can play that card at a minus two cost during his turn but when his turn ends he has to flip it back over um so like what could be what is his hunch right it could totally be anything he's the he's the he's the seeker guardian five two as well Really likes insights, of course. Yeah, and then he has a gun for his signature, as he sh as he will. Um, although this gun is very interesting, it also adds uh, supports tool assets, which there are a lot more tools in Scarlet Keys now. Um, I, I should say in the game because of Scarlet Keys. So maybe some interesting deck uh, decks that he can run with tools specifically. Um, in an unsolved case, pretty okay weakness. Obviously, when it comes up, you'll you won't be happy, but it's not the worst thing in the world. All right, next is Preston Fairmont, the millionaire. Ones across the board. That must mean his ability is really good, right? Anytime you gain one or more resources from a card effect, place them on family inheritance instead of in your uh, resource pool. Here's family inheritance. Basically, he gets four money a turn for free. And you can spend money from family inheritance as if it were in his resource pool. However, um, hold on. What is the thing that says that he can spend? Yeah, there we go. Forest. When your turn begins, place your resources on this card. Resources on this card may be spent as if they're in your resource pool. Discard all of them at the end of your turn. That's it. Um, basically, he, he, he gets a lot of money. But none of that money is actually his. And so it will go away at the end of his turn unless you take an action to actually give it to himself. Um, which honestly is really, really cool. And it's really the only way to deal with those bad stats, right? You got to pay for stuff. Um, so super interesting character. He's, his deck building is the rogue survivor 0 to, uh, zero to 5, 0 to 2. Um, but no illicit cards. I, I You wouldn't dare. And his weakness is actually pretty all right i would say like by the time it hits near the end of the game you should be able to get rid of it i think so yeah preston's pretty cool i think i've actually never played preston maybe i'll try him out all right diana freaking stanley i love diana stanley i know that well let's just go on for it she has one brain what kind of mystic is she well she gets plus one brain for each card beneath her how do you get cards beneath her? You cancel or ignore things, either, or just game effects. Literally anything, actually. After a card you own cancels or ignores a card effect or game effect, um, then you can slot it underneath there. And you also get a card in your, a card in your resource for your troubles, which is crazy good. Um, she is the Mystic Guardian sort of, uh, class. And she also starts with. Uh, an extra card in her opening hand, Dark Insight, which is just a cancel. We shuffle it back into the deck. Um, there's also Twilight Blade, and of course, there is Terrible Secrets. Um, Twilight Blade is really cool if you can get it down. Obviously, being able to cycle the cancels out underneath her is really cool. Terrible Secret is not terrible of a weakness. Um, but uh, I love Diana just because I, I just, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's just really fun to just cancel all the shit. It's really fun. All right, next we have Rita Young. Previously, well, let's, let me just get into it. So she has pretty good stats. She obviously has a five in agility, which is very good for evading. And her reaction is after you evade an enemy, either deal it a damage, deal it a damage, or move to a connecting location. Limit once per round. 
I do think that a lot of people's issues with Rita are is that limit once per round, which literally her elder sign gets rid of. So like, it's one of those things where her playstyle is very unique in the sense that you're evading things, maybe dealing a damage or just moving around, but you're not really solving the problems. And so you really need cards that solve problems, like actual damage cards or cards that evade and do other things. Or cards that, when you attack, evade, for example. Um, she does get tricks, which have gotten a lot better in recent expansions. Notably in um, Winifred Habamox. Why is this not zooming in? There we go. I fixed the I fixed the, the focus. Anyway, yeah, a lot of really good tricks in like the Winifred Habamox starter deck, Edge of the Earth, and Scarlet Keys. Um, although, except for Clean Sneak, Sag, that she can take. Um, her signature is I'm Done Running, which I have literally never played. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is. What is it? Uh, ready to engage all enemies, their locations, and I don't know if I'm instead of exhausting this game for the enemy to deal with damage. Okay, so it's just, it makes her, you can fight with your foot now. That's basically it. At least as far as I can tell. Yeah, instead of evading. Oh, actually, it says instead of exhausting and disengaging. So you are still evading, so you get your once per round ping or move, but you're also doing a fight every time, basically, to deal with the damage. Which, again, isn't even that good, because the like, weapons are better. So I'm not really sure. Uh, also, Hoods is probably one of the scariest signature weaknesses in the entire game. Like, it's a really beefy enemy that isn't super easy to deal with, and after you evade it, it attacks you, which is like her whole thing um for me the scariest part is that hoods deals horror and so one if you draw it during your turn you won't be able to kill it basically and so you'll take a horror at least in the enemy phase but if you try to do things and it'll deal you more horror and rita rita only has five sanity so that is pretty pretty tough all right and our final investigator as i said a six investigator box it is marie lambeau her stats are insane, actually, now that I look at her. While you have one or more Doom among cards you control, you may take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to play spell cards or activate spell action abilities. Yes, the original Doom Mystic before Amina Zidane. Uh, I remember her deck building is also a little weird. It's like, yeah, spell card 0 to 5, Mystic card 0 to 3, Occult card 0, up to 5 other levels 0, or Seeker or Survivor cards. Sorry, Seeker Survivor cards. Yeah. R really weird. So th basically the spell trait is what she goes for. Um, I've never played with Murray. She scares me. I know that I did a whole campaign playing with Amina. But that was also when I had things like um, uh, Sin Eater, right? <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Maybe Murray is good. I I'm sure that she's awesome. But... um mystifying song uh really interesting just stop the agenda for advancing um honestly i don't even know how good this is because all it like it's a ward basically it stops a doom potentially um unless you can maybe if they're on a bunch of acolytes you have to clear off the doom and then it stops you from advancing for a few turns i guess maybe uh but here's the real meat <laughs> baron samdi god damn baron samdi is a scary signature weakness he's an asset so immediately he comes into play with uh he comes into play and immediately knocks out whatever ally you're using so sorry Alyssa graham or uh what's the fact what, what's the what's the new uh mystic a ally from scarlet keys el rubash right goodbye el rubash and also goodbye all the assets that you attach to her <laughs> jesus um and then double the damage <laughs> that you take. And you have to put three Doom on him. Um, obviously, it's fast to put Doom on him, which is good for you because you can get those actions back, potentially. It's really scary. Um, yeah. Also, <laughs> I love it. Like It could be unexpected during the upkeep phase that you draw him. And then during the Mythos phase, someone takes an additional damage. Um, and then it kills them. That would be hilarious. Although, that would be very unfortunate, obviously. All right, those are the investigators. Let's move on to the guardian cards. Starting with something worth fighting for. So, horror analog to true grit. It's all right. 
That's basically as much as I have to say about it. Alice Luxley. Ooh, Alice Luxley is very good. Um, especially in Joe Diamond, because the whole thing. And of course, paired with Greta Wagner, it's pretty spicy. But uh, yeah, she's. I think she's just pretty solid. Hallowed Mirror. Very good card uh, nowadays, actually. Obviously, well, yes, because of the upgrade. But also because the uh, uh, Soothing Melodies are actually pretty decent uh, healing. So here's Soothing Melodies, right? You heal two and two, two or two or combination and you draw a card, which like, I mean, that's already pretty good. Um, if you've, I'm playing a Parallel Agnes deck right now and Soothing Melodies are awesome. Interrogate. Parlay. Choosing human or an enemy location. Yeah, this is a weird one. I don't think I've actually ever seen this played. I've never seen it played, so I, I couldn't speak on it, but maybe. Uh, Delay the Inevitable. It's honestly a pretty niche card. It works well in Joe's Hunch deck, in my opinion, and is also a good cancel for Diana. Um, it's one of the cancels that you can actually loop with Twilight Blade because Twilight Blade doesn't allow you to put it underneath her when you play it from Twilight Blade. But when you play Delay the Inevitable from your Twilight Blade, it goes into your play area, and then it goes from your play area to underneath her, which is valid. So that's super cool. Otherwise, it's actually not that great, honestly. Warning shot. Oh my god. I have big bullets, right? Am I right? Is this the expansion with the bar, actually? No, that that's that was last expansion, I think. You know what? I can't remember. Let's figure it out. But uh spend an uh, spend an ammo, move everyone, everything. I think the problem with this is that the prevalence of hunters, it doesn't solve the problem. The hunters are just gonna come back anyway. It's also an action. Yeah, it's an action. Two cost action. Nah. Steadfast, though. All of these skills in this cycle are very, very good, um, in my opinion. I love Steadfast, actually. Uh, it's a great card in Silas, too, since it's innate. Oh, and here we are. Okay, with the Taros. Ace of Swords, honestly. Very good for anyone who only has... Any Guardian who only has four combat and what's five combat. Uh, well maintained, very good card. Well maintained is awesome, especially if you have other upgrades, obviously. But you can attach it to something and then have that something get crypt chilled, or you choose to discard it with a card that I'm about to show later on, and uh, it just comes back. Super nice. Put it on your flamethrower. It's pretty fun. Here we go. Look at this. The uh, I've had worse level two. You'll recall there is an I have I've had worse level four, which cancels up to five damage or horror. Turns out that never happens. And two is a pretty reasonable amount for a fast card that costs zero to just gain two resources as well. All right, we have the upgraded 45 Thompson. So I'll go over the multi class clerics earlier. But upgraded 45 Thompson, super cool. It only costs one if you think about it. Um, it gives you your money back, which is super, super good, actually. Um, the only kind of downside is it's basically just. It's just two damage, reliable two damage. And there are other cards that can get reliable two damage without initially costing six and taking two hand slots. However, oh, Enchanted Blade, level three. I love Enchanted Blade. It's so good, especially level three. You don't have to spend the charge if you, um, unless you succeed. And if you succeed and you kill an enemy, you've got to draw a card and heal a horror, which horror healing in Guardian is very, very good. Question. No one in this expansion can take this card, right? <laughs> Is that true? Is that true? As well as the Thompson, I believe, right? Because Carolyn can't take these cards since they're weapons. Huh. That's hilarious. Well, there you go. We'd love to see it. Uh, next, Telescopic Sight. <laughs> um, if I was playing uh, Taboo, which I am thinking about starting up when I start the Circle Undone, by the way. But um, this card is not great. <laughs> it's 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 not great. It's uh it's okay. The M oh the Mark One grenades. No. Nope. Okay. Well, let's we'll we'll move on. But the Mark One grenades is is. I want to say it's good because I just really like them, and also and also because it has supplies, so you can put emergency catch three supplies back on it. Um. But like it's it's kind of niche because you have to have the right campaign. It's insane in Dream Eaters, obviously, if you played that campaign. But uh, yeah, I would say they're just solid. I don't think that they're reliable. Like this is your main weapon because it also doesn't take up hand slots. So I think that's the huge part. Give it to Nathaniel Cho. 
And of course, we have our agency backup, big beefy boys. Look at here. Um, really, really expensive, and uh, honestly, a little hard to get full value out of because uh, it'll take at least like six or seven rounds to get full value out of them. I guess if you have galvanize, you can ready them and do it again. I guess. Um, or like if you heal them, I guess. But it's cost seven. It's it's just very expensive. I I think it's a good card. It's just very expensive, unfortunately. All right, those are the guardian cards. Let's move on to the seeker cards, shall we? So we have the fingerprint kit. It's great. It does cost a lot. For four resources is not is no joke. But um, it's three deductions, and who doesn't love more deductions? I certainly love more deductions. Mr. Rook, the broken version. My goodness. Um, I really do think that the taboo kind of balanced him out pretty well. Obviously, the taboo isn't balanced, but um, making that an action. Because I think they overestimated the fact, like, oh, it, like, you know, you have to draw your weakness as well. But sometimes that's a good thing. In fact, more times it's a good thing because you get to choose it when to do it. But uh, yeah, Mr. Rook is insane. He's uh, very good. Hawkeye, fold the camera. Daryl's been missing you. Um, very good card. Good card. Yeah, it's a good card. Occult Lexicon. Oh my god. So Occult Lexicon is the same thing for Hollow Mirror, but you get Blood Rites instead. And Blood Rites are insane! They're insanely good! Obviously, as long as you have the money. But uh, Seekers with Dr. Mylan or any kind of resource generation. Insane. Alright. Next, we have Connect the Dots, which is um, an interesting card. It's, t it's really tough to pull off, I would say. Because it's like, well, you want to get the clues from the high shard locations, but you have to get them from lower shard than the one you're getting. So uh, I don't know if it really pulls it off. It does. It does have good icons though. So crack the case though. Crack the case. I love crack the case. One of the best resource or economy cards for seekers ever got. Um, like you can significantly get three to four resources off this card, and it's fast. That's like already better than most economy cards. Ooh, knowledge is power. This card breaks the game a little bit. Um, it's really good, though. Obviously, you're doing something that would normally take an action, generally, fast. Um, but without also spending any of its costs. So you can, you know, activate Arcade Glyphs, because that's a spell, without spending a charge. You can... Uh, can activate the necronomicon without spending any secrets obviously it's it's pretty it's pretty busted um i've I, i've liked i've always used this to um activate forbidden tome to get an extra fast move and get a clue it's it's it makes that card good but it's mostly because of knowledge is power obviously all right ghastly revelation ah one of these cards where you get defeated <laughs> after this uh i don't play it that's my only advice just you might as well just get a better card. Like, it's very flavorful. Like, you know, it's for flavor. But um, I don't think the card is very good. But that's okay. Curiosity. Curiosity. Same with Steadfast. Very, very good card. I love me some Curiosity. I put it in a lot of my Seeker decks. Um, it is innate. So technically, Silas could take it. I don't know why he would. But uh, I love this in Min as well. Very, very good card. Okay, upgraded card, Death 13. Honestly, I think that Death 13 might be the best of the Tarot's uh, because having higher book is like always good, in my opinion. And also they have Studious, so they have a better chance to draw this. Potentially, potentially. Esoteric Atlas. So this is the level one version, which is up to two connections away. I think there's one that's like up to three or something. I think that came out in the Harvey Walters starter deck. Um, it's okay. It's a tome for Daisy, maybe, if you want movement. But just play Shortcut instead, I guess. Scroll of Secrets 3. I love the Scroll of Secrets with the Taboo. We're not playing Taboo, though. So Scroll of Secrets, it's pretty bad. It takes an action to exhaust, and it does the stuff. It's not so good. Grizzly Totem, however, is very, very good. It basically turns all of your skills into Guts Man decks over power and perception. If you succeed, you draw a card. Or the performing investigator draws a card, I should say. It's an insanely good draw engine because 
the, there's a reason that those four neutral cards are so good. It's because they replace themselves. So turning any of the skills into replacing skills is great. Obviously great in Min. Obviously great in Amanda. Uh, probably Harvey, honestly. Or maybe I'm going to put it in this Harvey deck. Uh, Studious. Start the game with extra cards. It's a very easy choice. Obviously, it's a permanent, so you don't have to get rid of anything. Um, and starting with more cards is always good. I mean, like the better your mul your first turn can be, the better. And we have Glimpse the Unthinkable. So this is the level 5 version. I also believe that the level 1 version was in Harvey. Shuffle any number from your... Draw cards into you. Got it. Draw cards into you. Reach your max hand size. So I believe that the level 1 was... You shuffle everything. Draw up to how many you had. Then draw one. I believe. I could be wrong. Um, obviously, this is a very good effect. Obviously, if your max hand size is crazy. But uh, it's very expensive. 5 XP for an event. Um, I'm not so sure about it. Basically. That's my opinion. But uh, I'm sure... I mean, obviously, the effect is good. It's hard to argue. But it's just very expensive. XP-wise. So, Okay, let's move on to Rogues. Well connected. Ah, uh, well connected. Very, very much of a staple in the rogues nowadays. Big money rogues. Well connected. He has unbounded stat potential. Very good card. Henry Wan. Oh, poor Henry Wan. <laughs> Apparently, Henry Wan is good with um, uh, like you play play Edge of the Earth. You have all eight frost tokens, and you have ten curse and ten ten bless in there. And the first token you pull is going to be the auto fail. I guarantee you. But um, maybe it works. Poor Henry Wan. You never had your time in the sun. Let's. I want to see an upgraded Henry Wan. Investments. So investments is interesting for me. The one time I did play it, it sucked. Mostly because I think I was being too greedy. Because it's all about, well, the investments. You want to play it for an action. It already costs one. And so ideally you'd want to get four resources out of it to be equal to eCash. So you need at least five resources on it for it to be good. Better than eCash, right? It can get up to 10. Um, that, that That's a long time. So it's basically a dead card in the, ba in the back half of the game, of the scenario, I should say. And if you're playing at the beginning, you kind of have better stuff to play. So, yeah. Obviously, it could be good, but uh, I'm not so sure. Money Talks, the level zero version from Edge of the Earth. Um, I mean, obviously the level zero version is... Is already good. It's the same effect. The level two version just draws you a card, which obviously is good. But Money Talk Zero is what started the big money uh, archetype. Very good. Ooh, here we go. Intel reports and also all actually not that's not true. Intel report one. Of, it's the better of the of the favorites, or sure I should say the services, because um, getting two clues is good for one action. Tesla's is very good. Costing four is not a problem for Preston Fairmont. Swift reflexes, more actions, more actions. That's basically the entire card. Not bad. Uh, decoy, the evade version. Um, non elite enemy, unfortunately. It's okay, I would say. And small favor, also non elite enemy, which is very, very unfortunate. I don't know why it had to be non elite. We have Tesla's damage in Guardian. Obviously, this is the rogue, so maybe that's the point. But, um,. Uh, yeah, not too good. It's okay. My god, this card is in this set. You owe me one. Look at another investigator's hand. You may play a non-weakness card in that investigator's hand under your control. If you do, you and that investigator each draw a card. Hilarious. Uh, I guess Preston can go get some illicit cards. Oh, you know what? No, it's not. Never mind. It's, uh, it's bad. Don't do it. Cunning, as I said, I love the, uh, I love these uh, these skills, in this cycle. Very good card. Obviously, you have to be going big money, but very good card. Uh, Moon uh, eighteen, not great. It's I think actually that's not it's not the worst one, but um, it's pretty niche. I don't know who really wants it. Okay, forty five Thompson, the rogue version costs one less when you over succeed. 
you can attack another enemy at your location uh, with a fight value equal to or lower than the amount you succeeded by. It's okay. It's definitely not as good as the Guardian version, in my opinion. Um, it can work if you are in four player and have lots of enemies, maybe. Um, if you're Tony Morgan and are thinking about succeeding by a lot, then it's obviously... Also, no one in this expansion could take this card either. Because it's illicit. and so Preston, what's going on? I mean, obviously, I guess these cards are for other people at this point. But um, that's just, I find that hilarious. Same with this card. Tennessee Sour Mash. I actually love the Tennessee Sour Mash Rogue version. We'll get to the Survivor version in a bit. But uh, that extra damage on that discard is great. And having plus three willpower for two tests is comparable. To what the survivor one does, but I I love that extra two damage. Also, it's a no hand slot plus two damage, so it's great. Another day, another dollar. This card is very very cool. Um, I like it. If you have both of them, you start with nine resources. That seems like a good time to me. And finally, ah, double double toil and trouble. Uh, double double. <laughs> Oh, it's one of these again. So they actually haven't done this by Circle and done that because this is an exceptional card and I have two copies of them. Um, obviously, it's very expensive, but when you can pull off double double plays, it feels awesome. Playing two copies of the same event is freaking awesome, especially when they're huge. <clears throat> All right, let's go to Mystics. We got two Mystics in this pool, so let's see what they do. First, we got Sign Magic. Additional Arcane Slot. Spell or Ritual Asset. It's fast. It's okay. We have better ways to get uh, Arcane Slots nowadays, in my opinion. Wither. Poor Wither. You know what? I will say, for Wither's sake. Nope, never mind. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's uh, It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, that's about it. Six cents, though. Six cents. I don't know what happened. Like, they both only generate one clue or one damage for Wither specifically. But uh, six cents is awesome. Even the level zero version. You get to investigate at another location instead of your own if you draw one of the tokens. That can be really clutch sometimes. Like, if Wither allowed you, instead of just dropping their fight and evade for one turn meant that you could attack, like, any enemy on the board, right? And deal it one damage. That'd be different. Maybe that would be interesting. I don't know. But uh, that's what Sixth Sense does. At least a connected location, right? But, so, you know, you know. Deny existence. Wow. I don't think I've ever made a Mystic deck that did not have Deny existence on it. In it. It's insane. This card is insane. And it's also not like it's not like a huge effect. It ignores one thing. But it's so flexible. Like you can just turn off a grasping hands or card that loses loses you to lose causes you to lose two actions. Just say just say no. Um it's awesome. Love it. Eldritch Inspiration. This is a very weird card. Um if you're worried about taking too much horror on shriveling five, I guess it's not bad. Prophecy. So yeah, this is the one where the mystics get the weird version of the cycle of cards. Honestly, I think prophecy is pretty good. It's a little slept on and it really depends on the scenario, obviously, but in most scenarios, they get like more than six doom and play at some point. And that's when you need the icons the most, I think. So, um, I think it's pretty good. It's also practice. So put it underneath Amanda. All right, Four of Cups. Four of Cups is very good. Every single Mystic can use it, basically. More willpower is good, I think. I don't think any Mystic would argue with this. Maybe Amina, but uh, she's not here right now. Uh, Banish. God. I love how the all of the evade spells, the evade events that Mystics have, they all get forgotten. I forgot that Blinding Light was in the core set. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's also only a non-elite, which is a kind of a mystic thing at this point, I think. Um, but you basically, they just don't 
ready until their next upkeep phase. And you also move them anywhere, which can be kind of fun now that I think about it. You're on Essex. You uh, move an acolyte to the end of the train. That sounds fun. All right. Divermus Mysterious. Okay, so we did get some Marie support. Exhaust, place Doom, play a Speller inside that event from your discard pile, remove it from the discard pile. After that event resolves, remove it from the game. Oh, but it's an action. Interesting. I've actually never played this. Um, I've heard good things, but that's about all I got to say. Scroll of Secrets 3. Same thing with the Mystics. Obviously, it's very good in um, Grandma. <laughs> what the fuck is the name? Um, why did I... I just went through... Uh, Jesus, I don't. I literally only know her by grandma now. God damn it. Um, that's that's all I got. It's pretty good, obviously with the taboo. If you're not playing taboo, don't play. Enchanted blade level three lightsaber. Um, this is fun and Akachi. Um, I actually do think that um Diana can pre take pretty good advantage of it. Um, you spend up to two charges. Is that correct? So you can do three damage with it. But it only has four charges, so it's not a lot of damage. It's still pretty good. Diana, or sorry, Diana Esperance. So, yes, play your spell events more often, or more of them. You get you basically get three copies of a spell event that you attach to her from your hand. It's pretty good. I think you kind of had to build around her, maybe. Like, I'm just going to be like, oh, I'm going to put a spectral razor around her i'm like that's fine but uh you know you really need to there's a lot of thinking going on uh you only have you have to make a good choice with your spell event i should say it's pretty good though wither four sag i have heard people say that wither four is not bad which i will uh admit it's not bad it has a chance of dealing two damage for two costs I do think that the spell slots are so contested that getting a reliable like shriveling or azure flame down is better. And three cost is not that much worse than two cost because of uncaged of the soul. So, meh. If it didn't take up a spell arcane slot, obviously it would be hugely different, but it's okay. Six cents level four, on the other hand, is so freaking awesome. I love this card. So often, it gets two clues for free and the whole reason that this is different from wither because damage in this game going from one to two to three damage is so much so much more different than going from one to two clues getting two clues in an action is huge while getting two damage in an action is the baseline <laughs> And so because this can just accidentally get two clues for free, it's just it's just awesome. It's so, so good. And we have the granddaddy of them all. Deny existence, level five. It's honestly pretty hard to get to. It's like it's hard to justify that investment unless you're running things like down the rabbit hole, arcade research, etc. But if you could do it and heal five horror from Yoxathoth or gain three actions that'd be awesome it's pretty awesome Alrighty, that is the mystic cards in this set let's move on to the survivors i think the survivors have a lot of good cards in this set i can't recall it is really young but we'll see track shoes this is a great card passive agility boost and the opportunity to move Pretty fast, pretty quickly. I love it. Um, yeah, it's really good. Meat Cleaver. Wow. So this is actually where Pete Cleaver started, which if you don't know, it's Meat Cleaver. And you also have Pete Sylvester to put the horror that you take from Meat Cleaver onto Peter so you don't actually take horror. It's awesome. It's really fun. It's honestly really powerful at level zero. I do think that survivors will eventually, or anyone who takes this, will need to upgrade out of it for more reliable damage. For example, baseball bats, uh, chainsaws, stuff like that. But it is very, very good. 
Ah, here it is. So Drawing Thin is in this expansion. Um, Drawing Thin is an insane card, especially with Stella. But even without Stella, um, it kind of just does everything. There's going to be a test that you can just fail on your turn to get this to pop off. It's such good economy. Um, especially if you have both of them out. Honestly, this card should read Limit 1 for Investigator. But uh, it's insanely good. Act of Desperation. This is my one of my favorite events in the whole game. One, because it's very flavorful. Two, because it's good, reliable damage for an event. And three, because it generates resources. It's like all in one package. It's awesome. I love it. I also love that Mark Harrigan can take it because it's a level zero tactic. Belly of the Beast. Fast. Play after you successfully evade an enemy by two or more. Discover a clue at that enemy's location. Honestly, it's not bad. It um, it allows your evade person to uh, progress the game, which uh, I think is a good thing. And uh, it's for Rita. Or Wendy. I think Wendy could take it. Not bad. Although the uh, evading by two or more is a little tougher in her. Trial by fire. Fast play only during your turn. Choose one of two skills. One of your skills. Raise it to five. Obviously good in Preston. Because he's in this cycle. And it's uh, great in Calvin. Obviously. But uh. Spirit. I mean that's Calvin. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. It, you kind of have to. You have to be the right investigator. Able-bodied. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that this is the one of the cycle in this uh, expansion which aren't isn't great because um, item assets are good. I don't know what else to tell you. You kind of want to have item assets. So uh, it's going to be a little rare that you get that. But it's not bad. All right, five of pentacles. <laughs> this one is definitely the worst of the tarots, I think, unfortunately. Plus one, damage, plus one health and sanity is not great. Yes, it means Calvin could get up to six stats in both uh, in all stats, but uh, yeah, ultimately it's not great. I would say. Guiding spirits. This one's always really weird to me. It's like a composure, but it it's weird. Level one to composure. It's uh, it's. It's not bad. I think that there are better allies, though, unfortunately. Oops. Fortune or fate? Hey, that sounds like a dilemma, but it's not. <clears throat> oh, fickle fortune is <laughs> the one from Scarlet Keys. Um, I mean, it's an exile card, so it's obviously good in the last scenario. If you have spare XP, then it's it's pretty good, obviously. Like, it's a reliable stopping agent evils and or getting an extra turn basically so yeah not bad lure oh i forgot the traps are in here sorry this is a trick though it's not a trap you attach to your location or to a connecting location during the enemy phase each enemy that moves does so along the shortest path toward the attached location instead of to where it would normally move huh I don't know if a lot of maps even would support this. Like, it might just lead them to your location anyway. I know that, obviously, it wouldn't, um, like, the, the, the flavor could be like, oh, what if you put it at your location and they don't attack if they get to that location? That would be really, really good. And maybe even too good, which is maybe why they didn't put it on. But uh, it would make it playable. Tennessee Sour Mash, level 3, the survivor version. So, I talked about the rogue one earlier. This one doesn't deal extra damage, but it does let you automatically evade it, which is not a bad effect, especially because, never mind, it's non-elite. That's crazy. <laughs> Maybe they uh, made a mistake with Stunning Blow. But, um, yeah, it's pretty good. I do think that the willpower effect on the top of the card there is better than the rogue one. Because generally getting plus two to three tests is better than getting plus three to two tests, I think. So, yeah. It has its pros and cons. Grizzly Totem, level survivor. What? Um, it's a try-try again. Which is okay. 
it still gets the base effect of getting an extra icon, but it's not as good as the secret one. I think that's pretty clear because that one draws a card. Holy shit. Um, it's okay. Ideally, you're not failing tests. So, at least you don't want it. Bait and switch. Oh, right. This one is a trick. Okay. Evade and swap. Evade and swap. Oh, I see. Either you push an enemy or you swap with an enemy. Yeah. Sorry. No, you don't push an enemy. Yeah, you know, you do. Move it to a connecting location. Also, okay, obviously non elite because you're moving enemies. Um, it's weird. <laughs> I've never played it. Don't know how to think about it. You catastrophe. Hey, we're finally to the revised core set, which I think this is the, 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 the latest card in the lifetime of the game that was included in the revised core. It's very, very good. Uh, the whole taboo that made it remove itself from the game was wise. Um, honestly, it's a little bit awkward sometimes because survivors tend to play pretty low to the ground. So they may not always have two resources. But when you play this card on with a survivor like Silas Marsh, William York, and have their Elder Signs trigger when you want them to, it is insane. You don't need Father Mateo anymore. You can be just you catastrophe. It's awesome. Okay. Those are the survivor cards. And lastly, we have our neutral cards as well as the uh, multi-class cards and our basic weaknesses, which we will get to. All right. Neutral cards. Starting out with Ace of Rods. I've never played Ace of Rods. It's a tarot card, so maybe if it comes into play as a tarot card, it's actually pretty good, I think. Um, but if you have to actually put it into play, it's pretty bad. You get an extra action, but you spent the action to put it into play. Ugh, not so great. Oh, the, the council's coffers in this expansion. Wow. Um, it's certainly a card. It is certainly a card. That is as bad as much as I can say about that. It's like, I think that the, there are better effects in this. Don't worry about it. Anna Caslo. So Anna is interesting. Obviously, it's one of the only ways to get more tarot slots, except for the moon pendant. Is that what that one's called? Came out in Return to the Circle Undone. Um, if you're going... I want to play all the tarots all the all the time. Then I guess you go for. Her. Otherwise, you don't. Okay, the multi-class cards. We have the 45 Thompson, which is a guardian and rogue card. If you're not familiar, that means that this card is both of those classes at all times. Meaning that for cards that count how many classes among cards you control, this effectively adds two classes. Which are pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty standard. So obviously it's a little below curve. Because the 45 automatic. No it's not below curve. You get plus 2 combat. What am I saying? It's pretty good. It's just a little expensive. That's literally its only downside. Scroll of Secrets. Level 0. Non-taboo. Terrible. With the taboo. It's awesome. I love the taboo version. Because it's, it's fast. If you don't know what the taboo is. It basically modified, uh, mutated the effect. So it doesn't, doesn't take an action to do. It takes a free trigger. Meaning you can do it during a test if you wanted to. Um, it's pretty good. I love it. Tennessee Sour Mash level zero. It's okay. I would say it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. If you want that willpower test, willpower boost, it can be good. Oh, Enchanted Blade. It's so good. It's basically like it's so good. It is damage when you need it, and if you don't, it still gives you the plus one combat boost. It deals with the three damage enemy hump so well. You spend one charge for one of them, you don't spend it for the other one. It's perfect. That's always the issue with things like the 45 automatic. 
where you feel like you're wasting damage hit, shooting it against a one health enemy. This just gives you a native plus one boost to do that. It's awesome. Grizzly Totem level zero. It gets you an extra icon on that card. It is pretty good. It is not amazing. It, uh, the accessory slot is fairly contested in Survivor because of things like Cherish Keepsake. Um, Seekers. Do Seekers have good accessory slots? I don't actually think they do. So it's pretty good in Seekers. It costs a little bit much for what it is. Three resources. You need to commit at least like four cards, five cards maybe for it to be really worth it, I think. Um, but it doesn't only work on skills. It works on any card. So I think obviously Min loves this card, but she's not here. Okay. Our random basic weaknesses. We have the 13th vision. I love the design of this card. Yes, it is like haunted in the sense that you get minus one to all your stats. However, it's not that because it doesn't affect how bad you fail by, for example. It also doesn't affect how much you succeed by. Rather, it just makes it, it flips the fence, where one, it makes it so that uh, difficulty zero things, you can actually fail. Um, and two, it means that um, I completely lost the train of my thought. It's a cool weakness. I'm always glad to see it. It's pretty nice. It's a little awkward that it affects everyone at your location, so you have to remember that. But uh, pretty good. And the tower. 16. Cannot commit cards to skill tests. Um, depending on your investigator, this can be pretty bad. But some investigators don't care. It is very much, however, the mo the actually, well, I would just say this. The most annoying part of it is that it can consume one of your cards in your mulligan. That is terrible. That's really the main weakness. Um, it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. Alrighty. That is all of the cards from the Circle Undone player expansion. I hope you enjoyed my ramblings on this expansion. It's been about 50 minutes. Wow. It's been a while. But, uh, yeah, I'm super excited. Um, let's see. Well, the second to last episode of Forgotten Age came out today. So the last episode of that will come out next week. I am also planning on playing Return to the Forgotten Age. And then when the Circle Undone comes out, we're going to move on to that. Um, yeah. If you like this video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell to be notified when I post a new video. It really helps out the channel. This has been Superfang99, signing off.